on to my personal favorite, and that would be Fury Road. Fury Road, uh, yes. Fury Road. The best one. Um, the best one. Uh, the, the, another one with a fun production history. Um, <laughs> it's just so good. I love it so much. Mm, with the technology they had, able to do it right? The technology, they did, well, they, correct me wrong, they waited in order to make the movie. Like, they, they had it all together. They waited for the technology to catch up to what he wanted to do. But I think in the 90s, yeah, mm-hmm. they could have made it. Like, they had everything pretty much good well, to go. It, as weird as freaking Thunderdome was, it was still did pretty well in theaters. Mm-hmm. I think they just, and he was like, no, I have this really good, um, really good idea, and I'm going to get hold of hold up on you know i'm just gonna wait until technology catches up which it did and i i freaking love tom hardy i freaking love the way i filmed the whole thing um going back to actors playing different parts in the same series the guy that plays a morton joe was actually in the first movie that's what i was gonna bring um, up too but you beat me to yeah. it nice yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. i do that sometimes uh that's uh it's courtesy of a friend of mine who, who let me know that while we were talking about this uh, he's a huge Mad Max fan as well. He uh, he was the one that actually took me to see Fury Road when it was in theaters, and nice. like I, I wasn't, I hadn't watched the first couple movies, so I'm like, I don't know how about how I feel about Mad Max. Like, no, come on, you're seeing this with me. <laughs> and uh, no, I, it was ridiculous, uh, like a Mad Max movie should be. It was over the top, and I loved every second of it, even though I barely had an idea what was going on. <laughs> you uh, talk about world submerging in a world. That movie really yeah. took you in. Especially, you it finally did. get to see, I think, of anything. In the very beginning of that movie, you get to see how their society um, works normally. without yeah. Before fighting, yeah. without fighting or anything, you get to see how it actually works. Mm-hmm. How it actually functions, functions in the yeah. Australian, in Australian outback. Um, without any, without which, what, 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 sorry, with what I would imagine is oil depleting rapidly at that point, because mm-hmm. uh, if I remember right, they rewrote Mad Max to where it's it's not it's not it's not in our timeline anymore. It's an alternative timeline okay. where the apocalypse happened somewhere around like twenty two thousand four or something like that. Not the point. Because the original uh, would be in the eight. It literally was the eighties when it started. Yeah, I think. So. Yeah. Well. So the apocalypse happened sometime in 1990, 1980, 1990. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, they, they, so they consider an alter, so it's considered an alternate universe as opposed to a, uh, as a dystopic future anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the point, just a fun fact that I like to throw out there uh, to make me feel smart. Um, we do what we can. We do what we can. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and... Uh, Anyway, like you said, it just kind of drops you in the world and says, I don't care if you understand it. This is all here if you look at it. And people have looked at it, and I've watched a bunch of videos on it. And it he basically excellent freaking world building mm. for someone who spent all that time to not explain a damn thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it, um, it, it, the movie kind of explains the world itself just kind of as it goes yeah. along. I mean, you learn about the bullet mm-hmm. farm. It's like, okay, that's where they get all these bullets. There's a bullet farm. There's mm-hmm. gas town. Farm. There's... You which know. is where you got all the gas from and, and you know they have all the water so that the you know that they, they you know i mean so you have the three things that people really need at that point to do anything and know? of course and, the warlord has the water yeah way well, up in his little tower his ivory tower up there in the rocks his, his ivory tower <laughs> uh, his, 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 his little freaky ass family with their Varying uh, sizes and degrees of deform deformation and oh man creepy uh, but hey that plus we have a work and plus we have a lettuce farm mm-hmm. we got okay. lettuce cool. and lots of babies and lots of milk well they have to keep having babies so they can have the milk because they drink the milk i've noticed that i think they all drink the milk and they... that is something how that it makes them stronger. I think it was at the point, or I think so. Well, something. something I noticed is I'm assuming because they also have less water. Well, I think yeah, his family definitely drinks the milk because you know milk yeah. makes the body good, keeps yeah. you strong. I think with the other guys, I don't know if they even drink a lot of water. I thought that was kind of the point with the uh, blood is that they don't get enough water, so they kind of keep them alive with the blood. No, I didn't really think about that, but that makes sense. Um, I, I think that that is just what they do for transfusions and stuff, because I, they call him, oh god, I can't remember the name. Blood of the, bag. It was a, some bag, the blood medic. Yes, that was it, or uh, the the man medic or something like that. I remember hearing, I'm like, that is the most badass name for a doctor. Uh, 
the the man mechanic or something like that. Yeah, it is not, like, that, that is the most badass name for a doctor I can think of. Just in there tattooing um, Max, he's like, he's universal blood donor, high octane, because mm-hmm. Mad Max is like untainted with the rad- with the radiation. Yeah, so. Exactly, because well, he's from before, mm-hmm. which not a lot of those <laughs> freaking beast coming out there, uh, freaking playing the part so freaking well, well of the War Boys, who I freaking love as characters. Witness me. Witness me. <sighs> Spraying the uh, the chrome. Yeah. What you, we will go to the place where they are shiny and chrome. <laughs> Shit. Where everything is shiny and chrome. Shiny and chrome. Oh, uh, Barry and Larry. He talks about Barry and Larry. Oh, his his, his can, the tumors. Barry and Larry. Yeah, his mates. Tumors. Yeah, his mates. Barry and Larry. I imagine eventually they'll crush my larynx. Shit. Mm. Um. Yeah. I mean, radiation future. That's the. What happens and that movie starts out freaking epic too from the beginning yeah where he's just standing there uh, pissing into the dirt grabs a <laughs> long lizard. hair beard again yeah stomps on the yeah. lizard stomps on the lizard and all of a sudden they catch him um the the thing i really want uh to pl- I, they, they made a video game they go along with that movie I it seen was that. done in a similar yeah, it was done in a similar style to um to the arkham asylum games Really? To where it was the big open. It was yeah. It was the big open map. You had a car. Yeah. Write that. Yeah. If you have don't haven't already, write that one down because I really want to see if I can find a copy of it. Um, uh, it's on PlayStation Network play. sometimes. Is it really? Have you seen it? Uh, for like it's fifteen awesome. bucks. If it's the same oh, one, shit, yeah, it's the same one you're talking about. Um, I I I, I want to try and pick it up because apparently it expands upon the universe a lot. Because okay. you, you you build your own car, you get your own uh, war boy to run to ride on the back. And you go around the fighting system similar to Arkham Asylum, and you're 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 going to these places and doing missions. See, okay. And I remember, I remember it not getting like amazing reviews, but remember everyone saying it's just for the world and for the story, it was worth it. You know. Um. Anyway, completely just completely off topic there. I I and that's just something <laughs> I wish I could have done before we did before we decided to do this. To, to to have more world to build and that, that's how much i like this world that he has built is that i want to go back into it to experience it more maybe you know we I mean? can both get the game and try it out and we can uh, do a thing about that oh hey yeah. no, i'm saying you do stream oh what we call that synergy uh <laughs> and um Oh, one thing did yeah. you? One thing I did notice too, um, in that opening scene when Mad Max is trying to get away and they get him, you know, with the the bomb spears and he flips the car. Uh, mm-hmm. When he's crawling, badass. badass. And when he's crawling out of the car and they're coming to get him, uh, I notice in the background you notice the War Boys are gawking at his car. They're just like, like, yeah. oh my god, like look at this car. <laughs> yeah. They're very well. He, I mean, again, at the time, his car is pretty much pretty well kept. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's exploded and it, it's exploded and all this other stuff. But he still has a pretty much fully functioning Ford. Which, Ford V8. Uh, Ford V8 in Australia. Mm. <laughs> it's not an <laughs> Aussie. It's, it's a Ford. It can take a lick and keep on taking. Ford. We even survived nuclear weapons. <laughs> Found on road dead, not you. <laughs> With Ford, new Ford Mustang, get it. Um, and I think meanwhile it, you see someone. You, sorry, meanwhile, meanwhile you see someone driving by in a freaking Prius. Oh my goodness! Oh. Or a uh, a PT Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> a gremlin. Oh God! A gremlin out there. Yeah. Hey man, I don't need a gremlin. I got a moped, man. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't even want to chase him. <laughs> I'm not let him go. Just let him go. It's not even worth it. But he has gas. Not enough to make it worth it. Not enough. You put it in our car, that's one mile. His it's ninety. Ours it's one. <laughs> <laughs> twenty miles an hour. No, no, twenty miles an hour driving over a hilltop. <laughs> We're just slowly inching up, and then it, it dies. Up and... <laughs> uh, what the hell? Um, 
But I think they did a really good job too of of with the world building showing the fallout like from the nuclear yes. stuff, like the the boils, the cancer, all that kind of stuff, people would be getting. Exactly. Um, for from the water, uh, that's something that going back to to uh, th- beyond the Thunderdome. Um, the uh, the radiated water. The guy tries to sell him. Oh god! Oh, the guy. And he he puts the wand over, and it's like <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> nothing, nothing like a little radiation. Ah. Okay. Cool. Okay. No. All thanks. right. Cool. Cool. Um, and, but yeah, no, all the radiation and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, no, people close. To, it, 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 like I said, it feels like a real world where that something like that would have happened. Um, and now, okay, now moving on to the to, to my personal favorite part, mm, Furiosa. Yes. Um, badass. Sure. Furiosa being a pure badass. Fun fact about that one: Did you know that she was supposed to get her own movie? Like the 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 Fury Road was supposed to be not have Max in it at all. It was supposed to be all about Furiosa, which makes sense because he is in the background. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, they he wanted basically the way it was described to me is George Miller wanted a trilogy of those movies. Mm -hmm. Um, So he wanted he wanted to make one about Furiosa. He wanted to make do then have her meet Mad Max and then have them do like a have them do like a big epic movie together okay um a lead but, up. yeah but studios being what they are they said no you get one movie and he said he said all right cool and he made he changed the stuff and made it into a still pretty fucking awesome movie very awesome um very awesome but just the thing about that as a trilogy about furiosa having her own movie without mad max involved in it at all existing into it and then bring him in that would have been epic Okay, you got the build up with how, Furiosa. How, how, do that. No, 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 no. Let me throw this one out there for you. We don't know. We know George Miller did it. We don't know. We know it takes place in the Mad Max universe. We don't know there's going to be a trilogy. The post credit scene where Max shows up. Can you freaking imagine? Like, oh, don't even show his face. Just give us like the tease. Yes. Maybe his voice or I'm something. Gonna... Yeah, <laughs> have Mel Gibson's voice. Uh. Well, I mean, um. I'll tell you what, Tom Hardy did do a really good job. He even sounded uh, Tom Hardy. sounded like him. Well, I I think he Tom Hardy just sounds like a young Mel Gibson. I'll be completely honest with you on that one. I feel like he detail. did a fan, he did a fantastic job, but I feel like uh, first of all, I feel like Mel Gibson wasn't really acting in those movies very much. Like he was just playing. What would I do if I were in a post-apocalyptic Australia? Hmm. Hmm. And cut. <laughs> And, and film and print. Okay, cool. Um, and that was the whole thing. That was the way that that movie was made. Uh, he did a fantastic job. I love Tom Hardy, but the problem is every time I watch a Tom Hardy movie, I, he comes up with one or two lines. Well, all I can hear is Mister One. <laughs> it probably it doesn't uh, help that that came out after the Batman movie too. It, 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 did it, did it really? I can't remember the order. Was it before? Um, I, it, Either way, you watch it now, and you he, with his face covered, you're gonna yeah, think it, Bane. It, it, I don't do it very often because, of course, he did he did the voice for Bane, but it's just it's like I said, it's one or two lines. If it's muffled at all, or he delivers it in like just a very specific way, all I hear is, "I'm going to take that man down." <laughs> that would be very painful for you, and um, <laughs> you know. Uh, at least you hear that. I hear, "Hello, Mister UPS Man." <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Mister UPS Man? Mister UPS Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. he's got that, but, uh, but he, he did so good. Back, he's great. Uh, there's always a tinge of Bane in anything he does. For me. He's a fantastic actor. He did a great job. Unfortunately, he was also pain in probably one of the weirdest Batman movies. That's I've that's going to be his Jon Snow Batman moment movie. forever. Uh, Jon Snow. Um, we can do that one at some point too. I want I want to just have us both binge Game of Thrones and hate ourselves. For oh goodness, we'll we'll, we'll figure out how to structure that one. That, that, I think that's a season by season, week by week, is what we do on that one. That's going to be an hour long like, each time too, for sure. That's. That's a lot. Well, we, well, we have in be- we have in betweens like we watch. Okay, we ha- we're doing. We need to watch Game of Thrones, but while we're doing, it, we also have to watch. I don't know, uh, some Marvel movie just so we can talk about. You know what I mean? So we Thompson. have to fill in. <laughs> what? 
something to fill it in. Some Ninja Turtles, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the Ninja Turtle I movies. Watch, like, I need to watch three Ninja Turtles movies in between watching... <laughs> In between, in between every Game of Thrones season we watch, we have to watch a Ninja Turtles movie <laughs> just to do the the decompressing. Uh, there was, I can't remember if it was Ninja Turtles or Game of Thrones when the two twins were having sex with each other. Uh, <laughs> when was it? What, what Game of Thrones episode was that when she ripped off part of her dress and they're like, "Whoa, April, what are you doing?" And she's like, "I'm on vacation." <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that was uh, season three? Is that season three Game of Thrones? Is that Cersei? Or is that Arya? Yeah. No, 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 it was April. April, you know, the, the oh, lesser April. known. Yeah, that that's right. She shows up in like three episodes before getting beheaded. Was she the one that went out with uh, Jace Momoa? April O'Neil? Um, I think she was his first wife. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> God, King, um, King, King Donatello. That was, that was something. King Donatello. Man, he really liked those boars and those that philandering. Uh, okay, we're creating our own universe here, and I need, we need to stop before this. But yes, um, so um, um, yeah, fair. Now I forgot her name. Uh, fair, Fairy, Furiosa, Furiosa. Yes, and that Furiosa. opening seeing her when they're getting in the rig, the big rig, oh, getting man. ready to go out to oh, the bullet no. farm. They're having the big ceremony that that she's a part of. And my my imperitus. Yeah. Just to hold the drums. That is epic. Yeah. And she she has them believing that they're on a special run or a special mission right up until. What we doing, boss? Starts We're not going to Bullet Town, boss. Bullet, Bullet Town, boss. We're doing. We're changing the mission, and she has them following until they start falling, and they go, "Oh shit, we're we're traitors." When the um, little when the little duty's like. Dad, I think you should see this. She's not going to border town. He's like, Rrr! Rrr! and then he finds out that all the all his women are gone, and like, uh, yep, yeah. yep. Um, which, by the way, let me talk about the other the other episode in great names. Uh, Zoe Kravitz's character is named Toast the Mighty. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just want to throw that out there. It has no imperative on anything. I just in another great naming. Uh, toast the mighty. Toast the mighty. Just okay. toast the mighty. <laughs> just throwing that one out there. Someone wrote that down on a paper and had to tell Zoe Kravitz that was her character's <laughs> name. Yes, just your like, toast. Okay. <laughs> well, well he, she agreed to do the movie. So she read the script. She knew this was what was going to happen. She was uh, cool with it. Jo- toast the mighty. Um, but no, uh, talk about that first scene. Uh, this is a good time to bring up what I was talking to you about earlier. Uh, the, there's a startling amount of effects in this movie that were mm-hmm. practical. Um, most of the car chases, uh, I know for, know for a fact. A, a lot of the stunts, I mean, obviously there were some key, key computer enhancements. Of course. But I know they, used, they went through a lot of stuff and went through a lot of stunt drivers. Uh, specifically the thing that I thought would be the most uh, CGI thing in, in the whole movie the the guy with the guitar on top of the on top of with the gigantic bass behind him yeah that guy was was I don't know if, if they added in the uh, the amps or anything all that rigging. But that guy was actually dangling was was actually dangling from a bunch of strings playing that guitar um, and again named the Doof Warrior love the freaking names of that <laughs> universe and that Lord was so humongous bad. yeah. Lord Humongous, Doof War, Toast the Mighty. <laughs> I mean, do cool. you talk about a battle cry? Like, fuck the drums. Yeah. They got the guitar oh. with the fire and the drum. Oh. Every, all no, this it stuff. Was, it was very badass and something I wish I had the amount of either the amount of drugs or the amount of imagination to have to be have thought that up. You know I, I never mean? would have thought of I something like that. Said, ever. Ever in a million years. I could have sat here for days doing nothing but thinking about post-apocalyptic universe never would have had a guy with the, with the, his stage stuff on the back of a car dangling there blindfolded jamming on a two on a, just a big old guitar and but and you see i describe it and it sounds freaking epic you see it's just so much more awesome i love it i love it it just adds so much to it too because you're like yeah i could think of yeah they're gonna be going through the desert on their cool badass mm-hmm. cars they're gonna blow them up doing stuff but to add that you're like a whole nother level 
a badass whole level, a whole other a badass of awesomeness. And uh, it, it, like I said, if nothing else, it, you can say these movies aren't are fun. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, that's that's one thing. I, uh, I I can't remember if we talked about in, in the last video, but I distinguish between good movies and fun movies. Mm-hmm. Um, a good movie isn't necessarily fun in that it, a good movie can be hard to watch, can be like a whether it has a really really intense subject matter or whatever. So you can like it; it can be fantastic. It cannot be good. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum the reason I love some just horrible, horrible movies <laughs> is because they're fun because you can tell the people had fun making them. They're That's enjoyable. I can say about yeah. George, they're enjoyable. That's one thing I can say about George Miller is that I can tell this was a labor of love for him and he had fun making these because I want, I just want to be a fly on the wall when he had to pitch to the executives, the, the piece <laughs> of concept art of the man with the guitar on the back of it and them going, Huh. And you you want to uh, do this? And, yeah, him and a, like a like a Quentin Tarantino pitch is another one. I'd like to be there while he's sitting there pitching them whatever crazy crap he's trying to do. They probably like, pitch it in such know. a wild way that you can't say no. You're just like, well, well, you can't say no. Okay. How about this? Do they do they use the strategy where you you give them something like so far out there, and then I want. This guy to be lowered from space. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna need a low a high atmosphere drop point. We're gonna have to drop from there. Okay, well, cool. What if we just have a guy on the back of a of a car playing guitar with flames? You know what? I think we can do that, but I don't think we can do that. The the dropping the guy from space. Give him give him the well, guy from space a couple can... other ridiculous things and then settle with yeah. Well, what about the guy on the back of a car with a guitar? Fuck it, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that one. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I have three options here. The two other ones are just so far out there. Um, it, it, it's like uh, <laughs> there, there have been times I've I've heard writers in, in Hollywood they'll, they'll put like a random sex scene in the middle of a kids movie to make sure people are reading their scripts. <laughs> um, did you read that's this? How they choose. Did you read the script? Yeah, and I'm not too keen on this sex scene right here. Well, see, but, that, but that's how you know. That's how you know they actually read it, though. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the thing with I think it was uh, Rolling Stones and the Peanuts and the uh, uh, so the, 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 there should be no green peanut M Ms in their in the dressing room. Oh and yeah. That, if they walk, it, well, if they walk in, they see green green M Ms. It wasn't about the M Ms. It was about the you know what I mean. If you're paying attention to it, yeah. Yeah, it was about them actually reading the contract. You know, it it wasn't so much about that. But anyway, <laughs> completely off topic there. Just another fun thing. Um, yeah, 